So in today's video I'm going to be checking out uh, germanium diodes, silicon diodes and LEDs. In my last video I checked out zener diodes. I might make one video after this with transistors. I don't know yet because I have so many repair projects. And of course the first thing you have to do you have to set up your curve tracer as per instruction manual which I have already did and I'm going to be checking out a germanium diode first so and I'm going to be checking out forward conduction so what I have to do is apply a positive voltage to the anode and then I can see when the diode uh, basically conducts of course the anode is the one it's opposite the um, on the diode there will be markings it's opposite the stripe or the the bar the striper bar that is basically that's the, that's the cathode actually and once I do the forward conduction I'm going to go ahead and do the reverse conduction so we can see the breakdown voltage or as it's also called the peak inverse voltage and with a germanium diode I think it's supposed to spring into action from 0.3 to 0.5 volts and with the silicon diode it's supposed to be I think 0.6 to 0.8 so let me go ahead and um, go ahead and hook everything up so here we go with forward conduction I got this thing hooked up and well it's really hard to see here so I got to start moving things around again and the way I have it set up now each graticule each box here is one bolt and we can see here it's um, basically right here at the right past the knee here that little bend and that's about 0 0.4 0 0.5 I'd say about 0.4 volts um, see if I can't expand that so let me go down to I have to go ahead and do the math again because I'm changing the volts per division now I'm down to one tenth of what it was before so that means each box is basically a um, hundred millivolts so I gotta manipulate this more I think this double line here, I think that's probably um, what it's here is showing the showing capacitance here. That's what I think that basically is. Let's see what happens if I put my if I heat it with my thumb. Not much. Well. So, but if we count here, we can see one two three and sometimes it's hard to where you hard to make up your mind where you want to take it from you want to take it exactly where it starts that wouldn't be right so I would say this is at least where it starts going up here at least 0 0.3 0 0.4 volts let me go ahead if I can't move this around more and is it showing capacitance here let me take a look yeah it's a loop okay so but I would say this diode is good let's go ahead and go in um, reverse conduction I think it's for this this is a 1 in 34 that's a pretty common germanium diode let me go ahead and go into a reverse voltage and the breakdown voltage was I believe 60 volts so let me go ahead and try that okay I probably don't have to set this thing up every time new but I just like doing it anyways okay and go ahead and go ahead and go into reverse mode now 
So I am applying a reverse voltage of 10 volts. And let me go up, up, up. I'm up to 50, 60, 60 volts. I'm going to have to do further manipulating here. Um, that would be how that curve then would go ahead and look like here. It's a little bit different to get fear here. I'm at uh, each box now is since I changed the volt per division is now 10 volts per box. See what happens if we go up to 80. Okay, still looking good here. 100. Okay, we can see right there it wants to start taking an abrupt downward turn any second now, but I can only go up to 100 volts. Or it is right there. It's starting to. Here it goes. It's going down. Now it's really uh, went into breakdown again. Like that. That's all that took. Okay, it's at 60 volts. 80. A hundred. And there it goes. You see that that trace here. That's really starting to conduct right there. In fact, it's going so fast I can't even keep up here. Okay, so much for that. Now we'll try a regular silicon die, the one in forty one forty eight, which is a run of the mill, really cheap kind of diode. Let me go ahead and find that. So I've got the 1N4148 and I'm going to go ahead and accelerate this video here. You can see here that one box is one volt and basically all we would have to do is count and it looks like this one starting, con starting con to conduct at about 0.4 volts. Let's go into the reverse mode real quick here and let's go ahead and give this thing a hundred volts and with a hundred volts exactly nothing is happening so Okay, I can't get it to, um, can't get this leader to put out more. That's why you won't see any breakdown. Now, let me go ahead, as last test, let me go ahead and get a LED. So now I have a old salvage diode. And I'm going to try that out. Okay, we can see here, forward conduction at about two volts this is um, the way I've got it set up now one block one square one radical here is one volt so now we're interested in the breakdown voltage the peak inverse voltage and I'm gonna have to put this thing in reverse there and I'm at 10 volts now remember now I've got the LED is hooked up backwards. 20 volts. I think I'm off scale, so I'm going to have to manipulate here my volts per division scale. So now each, I think each um, block here is 10 volts. So I'm at 20 volts now. 30, 40, 50. 60 and here I think I'm starting to slant down so you've got some leakage current there 60 let me just keep on going up so 
So right now I'm at 100 volts. And believe it or not, um, this thing is still standing. Well, so much for that, huh? Let me go ahead and try a different LED. So now I have a red LED, a store-bought LED. It's lighting up. And of course what we're looking at now is a forward conduction, about 2, two volts and it starts conducting. You can see here it goes to here, 2 volts, bam, and it starts conducting current. Um, but we want to know, well rather I want to know, what's the peak inverse voltage and you know the breakdown voltage. So I got to here hook up the dial backwards. In my case I'll just hit a switch. And and then I'll go ahead and see what happens. Now this is uh, 10 volts per division, so I'm going to go ahead and um, what I'm going to do first of all, I'm going to go ahead and change the the volts per division on the scope first. So each square now is going to equal 10 volts. That way I can probably see it better. Okay, I'm at 10 volts. Now I'm going to go up to 20 volts with the curve tracer. I'm manipulating a curve tracer now. Okay, this one has a um, breakdown voltage of about here 20 volts. Um, of course, I'm doing this in 10, 10 volt steps. That's how I do it. I can't do anything in between. I can't say, for example, do 15 volts. So, but. Um, that's basically what it's breaking down at 20 volts. So one very last test of the day and I pulled this out of a little um, bag and that's the forward voltage again see here but I'm interested in the reverse voltage again be interested to know when this one breaks down so but first I'm going to go ahead and change the Volt per division on the scope. So each square now is basically 10, 10 volts. And I'll go ahead and put the diode in reverse. And now we'll see what basically what happens. Okay. Um, I'm going up to on the curve tracer itself, I'm gonna go from 10 volts to 20 volts that's my sweep voltage and I'm gonna see when it breaks down again each square is 10 volts now so 20 volts thirty nothing happening forty nothing happening the other one had already broke down fifty nothing happening okay interesting 60 okay 60 volts um in fact less than 60 volts about 55 volts somewhere around there then it starts breaking down evidently uh these leds can be quite varied in their uh, breakdown response so that was just to show that anyways thanks for your patience and i hope it was a little really a little tiny bit enlightening also I have to apologize for my rambling sometimes since I don't do any kind of scripting or anything like that it's just off the top of my head uh, thank you